All right, hey guys, this is John with the Active Towns Initiative, and I've got a guest with me. Say I'm hi. Going. Who's that? It's Coach Balto. Coach Balto. We're in Austin, Texas. On a nice cycle track right now, about to go check out some schools. So Sam, you're you're kind of seeing this on trash day too, so you can see one of the challenges with the uh, yeah. cycle tracks. The realities of trying to figure out uh, trash pickup. Absolutely. Yeah. So Sam, why don't you uh, let us know, uh, what are you doing here? What are you doing in Austin? Um, I'm here for a People for Bikes Advocacy Conference. Um, we're gonna be exploring uh, the amazing bike infrastructure that's been built in Austin and uh, we'll be doing some training. So it's gonna be really exciting. It's uh, been really fun to see the joy that bikes bring to my school with our bike bus. And uh, just really looking forward to opportunity to meet and talk to other advocates around the country, get ideas, share ideas, and uh, just come back to Portland re-energized. Sounds good. Well. Yeah. Uh, thank you for very much for reaching out and uh, look forward to showing you a little bit of uh, the infrastructure here in the in the burbs. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the Zilker Elementary School and you can see there's a fair number of bikes. Yeah, it's pretty solid. At the bike racks here. You get a, a decent number of kids riding in each morning. How many kids are uh, riding into your school these days? Um, it definitely varies. I think it's a really interesting question because before we did the bike bus, we I'd say like on average maybe had like five kids biking, you okay. know, five bikes there. When we do the bike bus, we've had anywhere between like 100 to 190 students, right. which is up to a third of the school. But you know, we've definitely seen more kids biking since we started the bike bus but it's maybe more like, you know, 15 to 20 bikes now. Right. So it's really interesting to figure out what that delta is between bike bus days and non-bike bus days. Right. Because right. we know a third of the kids can ride bikes to school, but trying to figure out, you know, why they ride on bike bus days and not other days would be really a, you know, a good lesson to learn and because a lot of the concerns might be infrastructure things. Right. And we can, you know, the concern is safety and parents like their kids riding bikes to school because of the safety in numbers. Right, right. You know, we can infrastructure safety into, you know, the students ride. Right, with, right. You know, diverters yeah. or other sorts of traffic calming. Right. Turn right and then stop. It'd be sort of interesting to see like where the parent drop off, drop off area is. Yeah, you wanna, we'll circle back then, let's do that. Okay. So Sam, I wanted to show you this little bit right here. You can kind of see how the, you know, the turning angles have been adapted here. So this is an older facility that got redone. Uh, so these flex posts and these curb lines have now been really reestablished. If you'll notice over there, there's no ADA compliant sidewalk ramp. Yeah. And so all of this is going to get redone. All of this will get rebuilt. And so you will see in, in the matter of uh, a relatively short period of time that we'll now have a bulb out here with ADA ramps. Um, it would be wonderful if this was all elevated crosswalk. I'm not sure if that'll be the case, but uh, for, so it's a continuous level crosswalk and sidewalk. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to just kind of point that out because, you know, this is one of those things that we end up seeing in cities is a transitionary phase. Right, absolutely. Yeah. And it's nice, I think, you know, as an educator, I love tactical urbanism, you know, like cheap things mm -hmm. to test out and to sort of uh, see what it would be like, how people respond. We don't have to talk about, you know, millions of dollars of infrastructure improvement, yep. but tens of thousands of dollars and test it out, see how it works, see how people respond, and then, you know, go for the bigger infrastructure later on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, let's yeah. uh, let's head on back and we'll see if we can find the drop-off area. I mean, it's just like this is so 
It's like such a no-brainer. Yeah. And go ahead and uh, turn left right here. Do you know if they'll do this protected bike lane like at grade or what? What's that? Will they do the like protected bike lane at grade or? I'm not sure. Yeah, no, I, I, it's it's hard to say what sort of budget they'll have when yeah. they do the the uh, the curb ramps right. and all that. Whether it's it becomes a continuous level or not. Obviously, there's a cost difference there. Right, for sure. <laughs> Pretty significant. So you might be wondering these big piles. Yeah. Um, we had a massive ice storm a few weeks ago, and so. This is the casualty of these big piles of trees. Um, the trees just were ravaged by it. They said we lost some huge amount of our tree canopy. Oh, geez. Yeah. One of the worst ice storms in recorded history for us. So, so this is the backside of the school. And so the traffic pattern in front there has gotten much, much better. And I don't really know the true circulation for the drop off, right. but it, uh, it's definitely a lot better than it used to be. And we've got some safe routes to school signage right there you here. Go. And I suspect right there is where you see. See, I think part of what the traffic pattern you'll see. So what the, I find, the, yeah, you know, I, uh, we don't know what the traffic patterns are necessarily, but you can imagine before that protected bike lane was put in, parents would drop their kids off, try exactly. to drop them off right in front, and hopefully they don't do that now. Correct. But it spreads out the drop off to more around because human nature is you take the point of least resistance and right. you know as parents you know with no judgment you want to allow your child to be safe and in America dropping your kid off at the closest point is the safest point yeah but if we just you know sort of remove that limited amount of space which can get really congested really fast yeah um, and create a more unsafe environment for people outside of the car you know you can still drop your kid off on any of these other streets right and you know they get an extra 50 yards 100 yards of physical activity and fresh air right a little chance to you know clear their minds before starting the school day yeah yeah and now you've created with the protected bike lane opportunities for kids and parents to ride their bikes yeah. which is going to reduce the amount of parents uh right you know needing to drive or wanting to drive around the school yeah yeah exactly Absolutely. All right, cool. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, let's go find another one. Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. So, yes, we're on the edge of hill country. We do have hills, and we're heading up to another elementary school. Holy shit! Is this another protected bike lane? Yeah, let's turn right and then we'll come up Holy from shit. down here. <laughs> and then in. This is so silly. And, by silly, and so I you'll notice amazing. this one has the parking or the uh, planter protected. Nice. Facilities. You'll also notice that this one has a little bit more concrete work done to it. Um, the other one is uh, going to get the concrete work. It's just not here yet.
So now you're going to get to see some of the challenges or the, or the trade-offs with the yeah. traffic pattern. We go up here. Oh. Okay. We'll get up to the knoll of the hill and we'll stop and we'll talk about what we just saw here. All right. Yeah, let's stop here. Yeah, let's get uh, up off of the pipe path here. So the origins on this one is that it was done a little bit more recently in terms of its original design. And so when they built this, they went ahead and built it with the concrete, with the areas for the planters. Whereas what we just saw over at Zilker, uh, it's a retrofit in the sense that, that that lane has been in for many, many years and they're refreshing it. So the concrete is on its way over there, uh -huh. whereas it's already here. And you'll notice that, you know, the sidewalks are yeah. in better condition here. We have the shortened pedestrian crossings already in place. But uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to show you that and no, you can get a little bit of a, an idea as to kind of what the traffic flow again is probably like here yeah it's just super interesting to see protected bike lanes right by schools mm -hmm. it really feels like a no-brainer to me yeah um you really want to roll out the red carpet to get more students walking and biking to school yeah um it is interesting how they sort of have the people biking going up onto the uh sidewalk area so that Mm -hmm. I'm assuming, you know, people turning yeah. can, uh, you know, get into this parking lot. I wonder if there's like a, that's where the parent pickup drop-off area is. Yeah. Um, in which case, you know, that seems like a trade-off, but, you know, overall, this is pretty incredible. Yeah. 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 I'd love one of these at my school. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and I like to say too, you know, it's, it's wonderful to have the protected infrastructure here, but I think we also need to make sure that there's safe ways for, pe for people to get out of the neighborhoods that feed these schools. So let's head on up the road and see where this protected bikeway yeah. takes us. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. It's a really interesting, you know, it's like, you have to juggle so many different things and oh, like, yeah. you know, you don't, I don't know what was what, but like having that, you know, turning lane yeah. had to be like a trade off. Oh, sure. You know, Absolutely. like they had to yeah. like, we need this so that parents can queue to, you know, pick up their kids. Yeah. And, and for all I know, that might be the only entrance to that parking lot. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's just interesting to sort of think how those decisions were made and yep. how it impacts you know if maybe kids don't like biking because of that little part because it gets a little more complicated or not or yeah i don't know i i would be surprised if that's the case yeah. I and mean, i would think that they're probably by the time they're up on that curb there they're yeah. probably turning into the school already. yeah that is true yeah it's fast all right cool it's funny the, going down that huge hill yeah reminds me our hill that we go down on our bike bus is yeah. not that big okay but it's still pretty big. Yeah. Um, and it's just so funny how like, so many things with our bike bus have gone in our favor. Yeah. Like we go downhill to yeah. school, we yeah. don't go uphill to school. Right. <laughs> you know, like you switch that. Yeah. This could be like a different story. Yeah. You know, and definitely like kids bike home and they go up the hill and they're getting stronger and more confident, but you know, going to school, like, you want to just be flying, yeah. you know, and like going down that hill, the kids absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's just kind of funny how uh, that's really played in our favor. Yeah. Our catchment zone has played in our favor where we're very like northeast heavy. Yeah. And so we're able to pull from a wide distance of students. All right. So now you're getting an interesting little bit here. You get this a little Dutch awesome. infrastructure even colored like the Dutch, yeah. Dutch red. 
And this is a, oh, wow. a fun little up. thing because this is a protected intersection. And we're gonna see it go from a two-way cycle path to one-way protected bike lanes on either side. <laughs> With a nice so, pickup truck. In yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna head up that way okay. so we can see it. Wow, but uh, yeah, so this is one of the feeder, you know, routes. You know, this is feeding the, the kids to yeah. the school with protected intersection. We won't go down this hill. Uh, but I wanted to I wanted to give you an opportunity to see wow. that this is part of it. Was this hard for the city to put in? Was there a lot of pushback or was it Well, I think as you well know, change is difficult. Right. So yeah. Yeah. You know, this is challenging. And it's challenging for, for you know, people to, to learn, you know, the new behavior. Yeah. And, uh, and this particular uh, bike lane here, this protection is brand See. new. And so it has just come in. Folks are still getting used to it. Yeah. We won't, we won't stay on this for long, but I just wanted you to see a brand new facility. And um, to answer your question, right now, yeah, the many of the residents are losing it with this. Oh, yeah. Because of these tighter turning radiuses here. They have to slow down. It's all, they have to slow down, and so they're freaking out about it. They have to think a little more. Yeah. All right, let's do a U-turn here. Okay. <laughs> I always love one of the first neighborhood association meetings I went to in Boston. Yeah. I was, you know, bringing up concerns around safety for my students biking or, or walking to school. And the board and the president goes, oh, yeah, the city put in these bump outs and now my car keeps hitting them. <laughs> you know, and like me as like a new person didn't want to like say anything to yeah. like be like, yep. Yeah. Yep, you, as you designed. Need, you need to pay more attention. <laughs> yep, as Slow designed. down a little. And again, here's our transition from the unidirectional protected bike lane to the two-way cycle track. It's also... You know, I think suburbs have a really big advantage in terms of building bike infrastructure because they have a lot more space in their roads. Typically, yeah. 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 You know, so it's like, you know, all of these houses have driveways. Yep. All of, you know, they have sidewalks. So it's like creating this, you're not really, you know, inconveniencing a lot of people but you're providing a really big service right and the uh, people oftentimes wonder about the planters you know who who maintains yeah. the planters these are uh, done on a volunteer basis and so right. right now they're sort of in their winter stage right and since we had a big ice storm and a deep freeze uh the the planters are looking a little shabby but they'll come up and look a lot better in the spring and summer i think something else that i've really been thinking about is like Bike buses and walking school buses are not like this newest fad. Right. You know, first of all, they've been around for a while, but we're going to need them for a long time to help scaffold communities. Yeah. You know, away from car dependency. Right. You know, to help students and families navigate and, you know, get to school and different options. Right. And it's been really awesome to see you know, how many people are, you know, excited about these community driven, you know, initiatives. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, and it's like even something like these protected bike lanes. Q 
kids still need some help to figure out how to ride them, for parents to feel safe to let their kids ride them. Yeah, yeah. And that's where something like a bike bus is perfect. Yeah. Because, you know, one parent or a couple parents on something like this could just be picking up so many kids along the way. Oh, I know. Can you imagine? You know, and it's like, this is amazing. Yeah. Like if I, you know, you're not, you're rarely interacting with cars except for these crossings right where you know in portland we're on greenways and like there's constantly cars that were you know that are driving in our space yeah there's yeah. somebody behind you yeah sorry about that yeah no good good point point. and if you'll notice too like if we swing the camera over and take a look up the street all of these side streets are very very quiet residential streets with no sidewalks yeah and so all the streets are essentially shared space right low volume low speed and so that's what feeds into this bit of infrastructure right absolutely you know it's 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 really this like you know our you know, parents, our older generation, like their community and social skills could use some practice as well. Yeah. You know, and this idea of like coming together as a community to solve a problem is not something that we've done in a long time. Yeah. And so we don't always think to like look to our neighbors to help solve problems and to support, you know, whatever concern we have yeah and i think that's something that i really loved with you know the bike bus at my school is just how community driven it is how you know it's a group of dads that volunteer every wednesday yeah and they love it yeah. you know they it, it really means something a lot to them to be able to be a part of this to help you know get the kids to school yeah and uh yeah, they've just really uh, enjoyed how like community focused it is. So at the bottom of this hill, we're going to turn left on that little pathway okay. that you see. We'll actually pull off and stop for a little bit and okay. talk about what we just saw. Yeah, this is wild. So Sam, um, I'll have you kind of summarize a little bit about what we were just talking about without the wind blowing yeah. on the mic, <laughs> since we were moving at a pretty good clip coming down this hill. But in general, what are some of your impressions of what we just saw? Um, I'm very impressed. I think this is really awesome to see, you know, really nice protected bike lane. And I like how they connect schools and the neighborhoods. I could, you know, I would love to, you know, be able to work out of school or have this kind of infrastructure to, you know, engage the students and the families to try to use it more. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, this isn't expensive to yeah. build. It just takes some political will. Yeah, you were just saying it just takes a little bit of political will. Absolutely. To do this kind of stuff. It's not really that expensive. Right? Yeah, this is just awesome to see. It's, and it's just been more enjoyable to ride, you yeah. know, on this. Yeah. You know, you could build a network probably throughout the neighborhoods, but you're still gonna have these massive cars kind of zooming by you, mm -hmm. which just, you know, even though it's, you know, low traffic, you still have to interact with, you know, cars where right. a protected bike lane really creates a much more low stress experience. Yeah. And I think something I am always doing is like just checking in with myself, like how does my body feel? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, riding on something like this versus, you know, when we were riding in the neighborhood by your house and like drivers don't care about us, you know, even on a... For the most part. I mean, in general, in our neighborhoods these days, yeah. especially post pandemic, yeah. they're a lot more cautious of yeah. us. And so, yeah, we, we didn't have any punishing passes or anything like that. But yeah, I mean, yeah, the reality, the reality is though, for, for real, is that 
those side streets yeah. are all shared space. Right. I, you know, I was mentioning that as we were heading down the hill. So inevitably, since there's no sidewalks, there's yeah. no bike lanes, there's not enough space for it based on the width of those older side streets, right. they're going to be shared space, which means that we need traffic calming yeah. to keep that down. And then we just need pe more people walking and biking yeah. in general so that drivers can anticipate and just be patient when they're on the, the neighborhood streets. Yeah, it's sort of funny. It's like when we were biking by your house, mm -hmm. there was like two cars that went by. I wouldn't say they were like, you know, it was a punishing passes, but I was like, they're definitely not waiting for us to go around those cars. Right. You know, yeah. they were like, we're going through. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and the irony is, is probably just impatient patient, uh, impatient parents. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh gosh, the vicious cycle. Yeah. Um, but you know, being on something like this, you're just, you're not worried about that. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're worried about, you know, you're paying yeah. attention to the cross traffic, yeah. but um, you know, we got to ride side by side at our own pace and yeah. it was really enjoyable. Yeah. yeah All right. No, cool. I love this. Now I'm going to take you on some trail network yeah. stuff and uh, get off of the roadway a little bit and we'll go find some breakfast. Nice. All right. Let's do it. So we're um, <laughs> in classic me style. Sometime last year, I was like, last school year. I was like, we need to have a bike bus summit in Barcelona. <laughs> you know, basically my way of giving an excuse for me to go to Barcelona for spring break. Right, right. And now uh, we're having our first <coughs> international bike bus summit. Nice. At the end of March. Nice. And uh, that's great. Hi there. And so we're, uh, you know, now, together. Is, is Megan going too? Yeah, Megan's going. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I, her, she, her had mentioned, she had mentioned uh, a European trip, and I'm like, yeah. oh, wait, that means she's going to be there too. Yeah, so she's going, she's going, I think, to Paris and maybe one other place, but yeah, she'll yeah. be there too. Yeah. Um, you know, there's people clearly from Barcelona and Spain, the UK. Well, why don't uh, you give some context of why are you going to Barcelona? So we're going to Barcelona. Um, in March for the Bike Bus Summit because Barcelona last year started um, a bike bus and it's BC got, bus, right? Yeah, the BC bus, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and it was super popular. Sam just asked, is that a river? <laughs> uh, so no, this is the famous, uh, world famous Barton Springs pool. It is actually the largest spring-fed natural pool, swimming pool in North America, or actually in the United States, maybe not North America. But uh, yeah, so this is, this is an amazing healing waters spring-fed pool. Amazing. Barton Springs Pool, you wanna catch this. This is so cool. Yeah, continue. Um, yeah, so Barcelona, nice. Barcelona, so yeah, the BC bus, and then the BC bus um, kind of inspired San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And so San Francisco started doing some bike buses and then I was inspired by them and Barcelona and Megan and Hood River. Yep. And uh, we did bike bus for Earth Day. Yep. And that was kind of the catalyst for me starting it at my school and it was a huge success. And, yeah. and you're in as and frequent listeners to the podcast and to the channel know that you started out with a walking school bus in Boston. Yes. Yeah. You know, which is kind of like funny that yeah. like, you know, I'm like winning this award at people for bikes. Yeah. Cause like this time last year, I was positioning myself to be the walking school bus guy. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm the bike bus guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's just sort of funny how like, yeah, life, you know, can change so quickly. And also like, you don't always get to pick the narrative of it. Yeah. You know, I'm happy to be the bike bus guy, but like yeah. walking school buses are, also super fun, much yeah. easier to implement, much more equitable. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's what it's, you cut your teeth on too. Totally, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. So what we're on right now is the Barton Springs, uh, or excuse me, this is Barton Creek right here. And this is the little arm of the Butler Hike and Bike Trail. This is the trail that I was telling you that you could have taken to get to the house. Oh, I see. And not been battling Lamar Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but this is also my key route to be able to get to the grocery store. Oh. So 
I don't have to fight with traffic. Yeah. You know, I can ride through my quiet neighborhood, drop down, and then, you know, head on this. And I'll avoid it if it's too crowded due to too many recreational folks yeah. down here. But, you know, it's fine. I'm never going fast. Yeah. You know, I'm always going super, super casual and always yield to people walking. And it's a very conducive environment, you know, especially on the weekends, to all the kids. You know, all the families are right. out here. And you're gonna, you're, you're, you're just going to laugh because you're gonna see where this pops us out. Right by the hotel. Right by the hotel. Almost to the front door. I'm really, those protected bike lanes, that was really awesome to see. It's nice to see like that in more suburban settings mm -hmm. to really show like how easy it is to like implement. Yeah. You know, how impactful it can be, how it can really like connect and provide more options. You know, and it's like... So there you are. Oh, stop, that's so funny. And it's also like, um, you know, the first protected bike lane we saw didn't have ADA, you know, curb cuts. Not yet. So yep. if you're, you know, using a mobility device, you know, you can just happily use the protected bike lane. Exactly. You know, we Thank are... Thank you. Thank you. Very... Exactly. We're turning right here. Okay. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. So, we'll, uh, I want to show you something that's brand yeah. new here. So, you're staying here at this yeah. hotel, and this is the bike and pedestrian bridge here that connects to downtown. So, you are literally across the street from the most crucial bike and pedestrian bridge over the lake. And I want to show you this new, it's brand new, by the way, the wow. hotel. And I'll show you this uh, brand new uh, yes. bikeway that they just built. You probably saw it already. Yeah. But now you get to ride it. I love it. And it's literally just, you know, a quarter block. It's yeah. literally just this, this block face for this new building. But the point is, is it's one of the strategies that cities can leverage, is, which is working with developers yeah. to be able to say, oh, okay, you're going to be developing this, you know, luxury condo slash hotel. Let's make sure we put in a protected bikeway here because in the very near future, Lamar Boulevard is going to have a completely protected intersection. Oh, wow. And so we, you know, they're able to think ahead, get that done, get the hard concrete work done, leveraging the developer dollars and, and get it in place and do it in a truly, truly significant way. Yeah. I think there's something somebody pointed out in Portland with specifically developers it's like they already have to do the sidewalk yep. and they have to then do the road space a certain you know distance out putting this or just creating a raised you know bike lane yep caught you know it's a minimal extra cost to the developer yep but you're filling in and you're creating you know safe protected infrastructure and i think the thing is is even though this is one block yep. we went out of our way to like experience it yeah and so anybody who's riding around can see what this feels like, even for a block, yep. 
And now they know, oh, I really enjoy this way more than a stripe of white paint. Yep. Let's put these in more. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. And it, all it is is one block, but you know, yep. you get that experience very well, and clearly. It's, and it's the first one block of what will be many, many blocks, yeah. many miles worth of protected intersections or protected infrastructure down the line. But you have to start somewhere, and when the when the dirt is dug, yeah. you know, hey, let's that's do it the right groundbreaking now. is done. Let's do that. All right, let's go over this uh, bike and pedestrian bridge. Awesome. Let's get to the downtown. Down. So here we are. This is the 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 beautiful bridge here. So this is the James D. Fluger Bridge. This is our flyover bike and pedestrian bridge. You have two ways down. You can take the spiral over here down. And by the way, they shoot a lot of commercials here, so they're filming, oh, shooting cool. commercials and movies and whatever else. Um, so that's one of the ways wow. down. This looks to the newer. Trail. And then there's this one, which is the flyover to get over oh. that busy strode. And then you'll see a big two-way cycle path right down there. Uh -huh. That's the Crosstown Cycleway or Lance Armstrong Bikeway. So we're gonna go see if this uh, coffee place has uh, any breakfast. Great. Hey everyone, John here, popping back into the studio to let you know that this is the conclusion of part one of the Ride Along series with Sam Balto. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, <laughs> leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, please, uh, you know the drill, <laughs> hit the subscription button down below and ring that notifications bell so that you can customize your notification preferences. After breakfast, in part two, <laughs> we head on up to uh, Shoal Creek Boulevard, Protected Bikeway, and we're gonna welcome Sam and back into the virtual studios here uh, to get some of his reaction from his trip to Austin, Texas. Uh, and until then, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.